Hey friends, uh, 10 minute Tuesday time. This week I'd love to share with you the mindset framework that I've been using on myself to navigate this challenging season. Uh, and it comes as all my stuff from my lived experience. And um, I, I think it's useful. I think it's robust. I think it's been the stuff that's really helped me stay sane and, and more than that, be at my best when I've needed to. So three things that I think sum up mindset success in this particularly difficult season. So the first is to have a clear rationale slash narrative for who you need to be right now. So we're sense-making creatures, we're storytellers, we've got to have a sense-making paradigm for how to do life. And if you don't have that consciously, then unconsciously, you will still have some kind of narrative, a prevailing narrative that makes sense of your experience. So uh, you taking control of that and being aware of that is a, is a really good start. But just being clear, not about what you need to do right now, but primarily who do you need to be? So, you know, I had some really exciting events lined up around the world for these six months. Um, and the first week when I knew it was all going to be shut down, it, it took the wind out of my sails. Um, but the way that I, I got out of that funk was to, was to find a new narrative. I find a new rationale for who I needed to be in this season. And so um, the, the cl clear response was I needed to be three things. I needed to be an artist first and foremost. I, I looked at the people who are giving the, the most beautiful, the clearest, most meaningful inspiration and influence. And they're always doing it from a place of artistry. And so uh, this is, a, this is a, a, a season for art for me. So be the artist, not, not what I need to do. You know, if you've heard me talk about the be do have before, that's a really beautiful framework and a really important one, counterintuitive, countercultural, but game changer. So who do I need to be? I need to be the artist and being the artist, what would I be doing with my time? How would I be dressing? How would I be talking? How would I manage my, my calendar, my day, my week, my month? Second was I needed to be the, uh, the author. So uh, the gift in this for me was a chance to finish writing two books that I've been, uh, you know, I've had on the back burner for the last 18 months. Um, and to be really clear about that, because the interesting thing about seasons is that um, my season might be different from your season. So I've got a bunch of friends right now that are in a season of pivoting, uh, reinventing, redesigning their whole business because their current business model wouldn't work in this climate. And so it was early on, I got caught up in their energy and caught up in their narrative. And I felt the need to, oh my goodness, I need to change everything about my whole business uh, and pivot everything. But then I'm, I was like, no, no, that's not my season. That's their season. I'm not reinventing everything. My stuff works fine. I don't need to pivot. Um, like, sure, there's some different challenges in this climate, but my stuff is still relevant, necessary, useful right now, more so than it's ever been. Um, this season, it, it might be quieter, but the opportunity in this season is for me to be an artist and an author. Go write those books. Go be the author. And so that was useful because it helped me navigate what to do with my time and my energy. So... You know, for two weeks straight, I just deep dive every day down to the park. Um, I just found out I had, I had police eyes on me while I was in the park, <laughs> wondering who this weirdo was, laptop, hoodie on. Because when, when I'm the author, I dress differently than when I'm the coach. I, I channel this kind of dark, moody, don't bother me, I'm, I'm in my own world doing my own thing kind of character. So that may not have looked uh, wonderful to police officers watching me in the park for two weeks. Thankfully, I had a friend in high places who said, oh, no, that's just Jamin. Now about him. He's doing good work. Um, so the artist, the author, and then the homeschooler. So this season, my kids are home and I'm going to need, need to be more present for them and help them navigate some maths, some history, uh, some geography, just to help them with their schooling. So who do you need to be in this season? Not what, what do you need to do? That's that doing flows out of being. Who do you need to be? And have a rationale, have it clear and be lock solid that, that it's not what someone else needs you to be or what they want you to be. Who do you need to be in this season? Tell that story. Um, uh, like Peter Drucker's quote, I may have shared this with you before, but uh, this has been my mantra in this season. Uh, he talks about productivity. Uh, he says, productivity, uh, in my experience, consists of not doing anything that helps the work of other people, but to spend all one's time on the work that the good Lord has fitted one to do well one to do and to do well. So just that 
permission just to go, I'm just going to run in my lane. I'm going to do my thing. And I'm going to do that first and foremost by being clear about who I need to be right now. So um, that, that's useful because it helps me then notice what I'm tracking and what I'm paying attention to. So at the moment I'm tracking assets. I'm building assets. I, I've built um, two books in the process of editing those, still building those and building an online short course for the insecurity project. There's a bit of a gap between um, you know, uh, my free stuff and then my one-on-one -on -one stuff. So what I'm tracking is, am I making progress with the stuff I'm building? I'm also tracking, am I putting out art? Am I being artful in my content? And the third thing I'm tracking is the morale of my family. So that's the question every day, three or four times a day to my kids, to my wife, how's morale? Um, my son had to learn what that word meant, but that's been good for him. How's morale? Give me a score. What's, what's happening? I want to check in. That's what I'm tracking. Your morale is important to me because I want to make sure that you're doing okay. You got all that you need and, and you're doing well. So that's very different stuff that I'm tracking normally in, in, in a season that's different from this. So again, if you are not clear about the season and who you need to be, you can be tracking the wrong stuff, tracking stuff that's making you feel like you're failing. Um, that you're not succeeding, that you're not uh, being effective, which is not true. So that's one, a clear rationale about who you need to be. Number two, uh, responsibility. So it's really easy to get caught up in what's not fair about this season. I was um, talking with my, one of my good friends just recently and he was really helping me feel how unfair my life was, which is kind of him. He's like, Oh, Jamin, you were, you were just on the edge of something really beautiful. Your business was on this wonderful trajectory. You're building momentum, building momentum. And this six months, you were really about to launch into the stratosphere. It's just so unfair that this has happened. And, um, you know, and then it's easy to go into the whole conspiracy theories about whether governments needed to shut things down. And there's a bunch of stuff you could spend a lot of energy uh, in that won't help you do anything. Ultimately, the question is, okay, so what do you want again? And what are you prepared to do about it? So in the face of injustice, in the face of unfair things, in the face of challenges, that is always the course correction question because it always brings it back in house. What you can control, what you can't control. So uh, responsibility. It's helped me also when I think about responsibility, it's helped me think about power and grace. You may have heard me talk about the two tattoos I got uh, maybe a couple of months ago, uh, power on my left leg and grace on my right leg as, as the paradox of doing life well, um, you know, realizing how extraordinarily powerful we all are as human beings. Um, but the fact that we're still totally dependent upon all life around us. Um, the, the key thing around responsibility is to realize that uh, when you are, uh, reaching for one of these two things, power or grace, it's likely you'll be reaching for the, the opposite one that you actually need. So if you're feeling hard done by feeling life's unfair, feeling that these challenges are just, it's really, really brutal and you're not, you're not coping well, you'll be trying to reach for grace. So you'll be looking for, for someone to come save you. You'll be looking for someone to fix it for you. You'll be looking for a handout. You'll be looking for someone to give you pity. That's actually not what you need in those moments in the moments where you've given away power, what you need is to take power back to go, this is you. It's all you, you, your results are your results. Yes. There's some stuff that was outside of your control, but your response is yours. Own your response, make the change, be creative, find out how incredibly resourceful and, and capable you really are. And you're going to find out when it's hard. That's when, when power is most useful to you. Um, but when you, when you start hustling and start driving and think you're going to go change the world just on the back of your own strength, that's when you actually need grace. So when you think you need more power, you probably just need to settle down a bit and realize that you can't solve COVID-19 and, you know, there's a bunch of other things that you have no capacity to do and then to surrender, to trust, to be open. Um, I had an extraordinary coaching session uh, from, from a great coach on the Gold Coast, Cody McAuliffe. Uh, who I reached out to him just to have him on my mind thinking maybe he needed my support. Turns out I needed his support and he graciously said, listen, Jamin, I'm like, yeah, you're a bit flat right now. Happy to have a conversation. It was a moment of grace because I didn't even really know that I needed that this conversation, but he opened up a bunch of stuff for me that just blew my mind and was so what I needed and uh, will not only change my week, but will change the rest of my life. The stuff that I got out of that session, just, just from a moment of grace. So, 
I didn't choose that. I didn't know I needed that. I didn't reach out for that. But um, because I was present and aware and listening to my own intuition to reach out to this guy, I got what I needed. So power and grace, the opposite of what, which one you think you need. Um, and the third thing is to take the pressure down. So number one is to be clear about, have a clear rationale and narrative about who you need to be right now. Number two is to take responsibility, 100% responsibility. Um, and three is to take the pressure down. So um, my office, I've got like, we built this beautiful house and 20 acres. My office overlooks rolling green hills, horses, trees, rabbits, squirrels. Uh, what else can I see out there? No, you know, all, all the good things. I'm, a, I'm a, a country boy at heart. And so it's, it's a lovely site. So I love my office, um, but my office feels different lately at, at different times, depending on the pressure levels. Um, there are times where my office will call me, like I'll have this deep desire to get into my office and just spend time doing who knows what. And it's, a, it's the creative time. So I might read a book. I might, you know, I'm watching Sopranos. Now, sometimes that's part of my office time, just half an hour of the Sopranos, or I might come up with a new idea for a podcast or some stuff that needs to go on my book, um, some social media content, but I've just got this free space to do whatever. And it's, it's exquisite. Uh, but in a place of pressure, my office tries to push me out. Like there's this resentment and resistance towards being in this space. And it's just so interesting based on how, like how this office feels based on the level of pressure. So um, I, I've been really thinking about pressure because I've known for a long time, I don't do my best work under pressure. I'm not sure if anyone really does their best work in a pressurized situation. So I know when there is no pressure, I operate from a place of beautiful flow, from creativity. I have access to the magic. And that's, that's really, really useful, not just for me, but for the world. So I've got to find ways of not operating under pressure. Um, and there always is this measure of pressure, measure of pressure, because, you know, people are requiring me to do things. So there's money to earn, uh, there's bills to pay. There's, there's, there's some responsibility. So it's not like you have this vacuum of no pressure but it's all around operating from this state of flow rather than force. So um, I think, I think for me, the, the importance around that is just understanding the role of bad days, understanding the role of being flat, understanding that it is, um, it's a ridiculous idea to feel like I need to be at my best all the time. Um, that, that there's no other, no other peak performance space where someone is at their best all the time. You think about the sporting world, and um, when you see an athlete perform at their peak, uh, if you were to track them for the next week or so, you might see them do nothing. You know, go, go have a look at uh, Richie Port after he finishes the Tour de France this year. If it's still on, I think it's still on. Fingers crossed, go well, Richie. Um, I don't reckon he'll be functioning very well for the next two weeks, maybe the next month after that. So there's this flow of energy, this preparation to be at your best when it matters most. And then a bunch of flat wasted time not doing anything so knowing the rhythms managing your energy rather than your time and, and knowing that if you want to be operating at a peak space of creativity and flow you've got to be prepared for flat days for wasted time for what looks like um, you know very unproductive states or others might even label them as bad states you know i've stopped i've stopped being i've stopped judging myself being flat and giving myself permission to waste time if i need to um, to watch late night TV, to eat chips, to drink beer, to uh, sleep in, to <laughs> just stuff around. Um, knowing that if I can take the pressure off, then, then I get access to my best. Because do you know what? You're probably not going to, no, you're not, probably not. You, you can't lose this game in a day or a week. Like you may be able to lose it in a month. You may be able to ruin your business in a month, but gee, you'd have to have 31 bad days in a row, making horrible decisions, giving up on everything. I know that's not going to happen. I know I may have one, two, I may even have three bad days in a row. Like, but if I let myself have those days without beating myself up, I'll be back in the game refreshed and energized before I know it. So to this idea that, uh, th there's not this time pressure we imagine all the time. Like we're not actually that important, I don't think. Uh, so to take the pressure off, to realize that state is king, like you really, 
if you're going to be at your best, this ability to manage your state um, and managing state is about managing energy and the, the, those who do it best allow highs and lows. Um, they are not at their best all the time. Um, I think lots of people have never experienced their best because um, they're never off. They're always on. And if you're always on, then you're never on. So I'm not always on. I promise you that you ask my kids, you ask my wife, if I'm always on, um, they'll, they'll shock you <laughs> with how off I am sometimes. Um, so yeah, I, I've noticed for me, and this was a beautiful insight out of the coaching conversation with Cody, that if I lose certainty when I'm under pressure, I drop back into my deep woundedness. Now, before this conversation with Cody, I didn't even think I had a wound, woundedness. I thought I was, um, you know, fully aware and awake and a self-realized individual. turns out that I do have a deep woundedness and it comes from my archetype, which is the, the high achiever, the overachiever, um, that when I lose certainty under pressure, I drop back into this place of feeling misunderstood and that no one understands what it's like to be me or what I'm trying to do here. From that place, energetically then, I drive stuff. There's this force and this fight and this pressure and I've got to prove something to myself and the world that I am as good as I think I am. And that, that edginess to that is this aggressive energy. Uh, it's not attractive at all. And um, it, I think it repels people. And it's, it's not a message that's palatable. Me at my best, I, I'm actually gentle. There's this gentleness to a very confronting, powerful message. It's delivered with grace um, and, in, and still powerful. So I think when I operate from a place of, uh, no pressure and have great certainty, then, then it's devotion. There's nothing to prove. I, I do my best work where there is nothing to prove or nothing to defend. And I, I think that would be true for you as well. I'm, I'm sure it would be. So if you can notice your own state management and realize that you are not at your best when you're under pressure, where there's something to prove that that cannot be your best, and so learning to understand your own intuition, your own rhythms. And, and I think the hardest thing about living by state and, and energy management is always the self-permission piece because it requires you to listen to yourself and trust yourself because other people are going to judge you. Other people are going to have expectations on your time and your energy and your performance. But if you're willing to listen and understand what you need right now and, and this, to see that the most effective use of your time right now might be to go have a nap or to watch a movie or to eat a packet of chips, um, but you give yourself permission to do that, then you get access to a whole new level of effectiveness and magic uh, to help you show up at your best where it matters most. So those three things, um, clear, clear rationale about who you need to be, not what you need to do, 100% responsibility. Remember, easy to get lost in what's not fair and what's not right. Um, and then... Uh, what was the third one? Oh yeah. Take the pressure down. And that's why, look, there's no, no introduction, no intro, no little ditty uh, before this podcast. You, you may have noticed that um, in the podcast intro, it says I'm on a mission to end unnecessary suffering caused by insecurity. Um, I don't think I'm on a mission anymore. I think, I think that language is the force is forcing this and driving it from a place of something to prove. Um, I don't think it's from a place of devotion. So I'm rewording that introduction at the moment and no doubt you'll hear it come out soon when it's ready, when I've languaged that in a way that represents devotion rather than proving. Uh, and that will be cool. Now, um, yeah, that, I'm sure that went longer than 10 minutes. I never actually time these things. I always just kind of work at around 10 minutes. I I'm guessing this is up around 20. So uh, you've really indulged me by listening. Hope that's been useful though. I'll give you more information about this online program that I am developing. It's kind of coming out in conjunction with the book. Um, the aim is for you to feel like I'm doing this with you. So you hear my voice in the podcast and you hear my voice through the book and you watch this, this process through these eight videos and you just all this feeling of like, we're doing this together and I am solving the insecurity problem. Um, so, and then ultimately to prepare you for when you're ready to do the deep dive one-on-one. -on -one. So there'll be more information about that very soon. Uh, you'll also be able to pre-order both the One Minute Coach book and the Un Unhindered book on my website in the coming weeks. So look out for that. Um, but yeah, look, always enjoy these conversations and I'll look forward to speaking to you again next Tuesday.